Hey everyone, this podcast is part of Story Mode, the podcast network of gamefully unemployed. You can support us and gain access to other great exclusive podcasts at patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. Dancing Woo! around! Teens! Angsty Hi, everybody! Teens! <laughs> oh, how's it going, people? Oh, my gosh, man. I'm so full of angst and dance. Me too. D- dankst. Just dankst. Dankst. Yeah. Uh, Just folks, ferocious my name is David dance Bell. fever. Yeah, my name is Tom Ryman. We, uh, hey, listen here, Listen, folks. listen up. <laughs> <laughs> we just watched Center Stage. Mm-hmm. Center Ballet. Stage! This is one of our students. Jody Sawyer. We have so many promising students this year, I find it hard to keep them straight. Don't worry, I won't forget. You know who I saw my way in? Who? Cooper Nielsen. Jody Sawyer, have fun. We'll go for a ride. Hey! Did he seem as cocky in person as he is on TV? I heard he hasn't spoken to anyone. But he talked to me. It's Thursday. It is. Uh, And so that means this is brought to you by one of our patrons. Uh, Specifically, shout out to Mike for Rachel. Happy birthday, sweetheart. Enjoy these ridiculous episodes. That's right. It's part of our dance trilogy. Oh, man. Our dance dance revolution. We began with Dirty Dancing. We moved on to White Knights, and now we're at Center Stage, the 2000 ballet teen movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, this movie is over 20 years old, and I just want to point out how depressing that is. Oh, yeah. There's a shot where they're uh, going into the city for a day of, of fun hijinks, and the Twin Towers are just right there. Yep. Yeah, right fucking there. And like the next shot is them on, like I guess, the Long Island Ferry? Uh, oh. wearing a bunch of Statue of Liberty hats and getting their picture taken. Like, I sent you a text as I was watching this movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, the text I sent you was, like, this movie has extreme 9-11 is never going to happen energy. <laughs> yes. This <laughs> like, movie might like, have inspired <laughs> 9-11. We're never like, going to die. Yeah. It has, it has big pre-9-11 energy. Uh it's man it it feels older than 2000 it feels like the fucking 80s well yeah uh, yeah i don't know how popular this i mean this i remember this movie being fairly popular when it came out or like making a big splash when it released um right but it doesn't i'm not sure how many fans this movie has maintained um because i think part of the reason it feels older than it that it is um is just like it hasn't really been cared for. Like the the I, I rented this on it Amazon. Looks old. Yeah. yeah, like the transfer hasn't really been updated. Like it looked real bad in a couple of when spots. When we watched She's All That, I had the same thing. Yeah, where it's like you can see the fucking film grain, and I was mm-hmm. like, Jesus Christ! Yeah, nobody. This feels like it's from the seventies. Yeah, nobody's caring for this film. <laughs> but I would say also the plot and the dance style feels old. Like they they dance to Michael Jackson. And mm-hmm. it's like when the, she goes to that dance class, it's like 80s dance or like aerobic dancing. Yeah. Uh, it just feels older. Mm-hmm. Um, it definitely is like it's very pre 9-11. It's, yeah. it's so it's incredibly. It's the most pre 9-11 thing. Yeah. Ever it's made. pre like recession. Mm-hmm. It's pre a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's just a honkies dancing. Most most of it. Well, this is going to say it's not all it's, honkies. It's, it's, Not all it's, honkies, it's Zoe but Saldana's uh, film debut. Zoe Saldana, as Zoe Saldana, is the only non honky, I believe. Uh, uh, no, the, uh, Eric, the guy who sprains oh, yeah, his ankle. Oh, yeah, the guy who sprains his ankle. Mm, and one, right. of the, one of the dance instructors. Um, Again, it's mostly. But it's mostly, it's mostly white folks, yeah. It's, it's led by Peter Gallagher. Yeah, he's when the, I think dancing. The, the theater director's Peter G- I mean, sure, he looks like a, yeah. a dude who would be directing the American Ballet Th- Association. Is am I correct in that he's the romantic rival of that guy who's 15? Yes. There's like a there's like another instructor? Okay. Uh, okay. There's another guy let's, in, let's take a minute. Uh, right. Let's take all a right, minute. All right. All right. We need uh, to say we there's need to lot. say what this movie is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's a honky's dancing, Tom. Yeah, okay, so this is basically, this is a movie uh, following, uh, it's an ensemble film 
uh, uh, following a group of characters, uh, you know, teens um, who get accepted to the American Ballet Academy in New York. So it follows them yeah. through a year of them uh, training for a big workshop at the end that's going to essentially decide who gets to go on to actually have a job and a career in ballet and who washes the fuck out. Yep. And I guess I want to ask the question, uh, Tom, how did you like this film? Um, I liked it, actually. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It's um I really liked what this movie had to say. Yeah, this movie uh, weirdly uh what you know what movie I kept thinking of while I was watching this? Uh what? Gosford Park. Ooh. Just cuz of the way it um we we talked we covered Gosford Park a few weeks ago. We sure uh, did. Guys know. Um but it's it's the same sort of idea where it's this massive cast, there's not really a main character and it just kind of like the story just keeps moving through these people and it'll circle back around yes. and go back through them so we just kind of keep getting it it, it 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 has the same sort of like behind the scenes of a big production your your cogs in a machine and we're all moving towards this one goal that we all agree with but everybody's personality yeah. is very different um it, and if you're yeah. into dance unlike white knights this will give this you has dancing. a lot of dancing in it yeah i was gonna say it was cool after you know watching white knights which is a movie that features like two of the best dancers in like modern history but we don't we get to see them dance like one time for three minutes this movie's fucking full of dancing yeah which again if you're into dancing i actually found ba ballet to be creepy oh ballet is creepy oh well you're a weird goblin who thinks you can dance like barishnikov so <laughs> i can't well if, you, if it makes you feel better i can't dance like this movie um i could dance like white knights but like this, uh, ballet is creepy. You stand on your toes. It's creepy. They're like spiders, like weird little spiders. Okay. Everybody's really skinny. Uh -huh. They move exactly the same uh, at yeah, the called, same uh, time. It's called choreography, Dave. Yeah. But it's like creepy. Mm. They tiptoeing around. Why mm -hmm. are they tiptoeing? What are they? What do they have to hide? I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know. They, they all got their hair pulled back. More spiders. There's a lot of bulges. Their little, their little shoes are full of spiders. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, it's just a creepy, I don't know. I will say, no. And then I'm, it's really high stress, like, oh, yeah. No, it as is. As a career. It yeah. just creeps me out. I, I, ballet, <laughs> ballet's very abstract, uh, uh, obviously. Um, yeah. Which makes, like, the final ballet dance in this movie very, very funny to me. The Oh, my God. The final the, <laughs> the set, the number of fucking set changes. Like, he comes out of a like, motorcycle. Fucking, There's, yeah. like, a street scene. They have an actual, like, sex scene in a ballet with, like, a bed yeah. that comes yeah, out. Yeah, what if they, I thought they were going to start just fucking right, right? there on like, the bed. Right, like, it's like, are and we going like, to, are you going to, are we going to do, like, the hairier scene from True Lies? Like, what? Like <laughs> what's happening? Yeah, and it's like yeah. the secondary one cuz Peter Gallagher, he's hot, he's the hot shit, He's right? the director, yeah. Uh, yeah. The other so guy his, is like the his... big star who's about to go off and do his own thing. Right. And so like they give him considerably more time and resources to do his ballet. Yeah, there's multiple there's like four or five set changes. Yeah. Uh it's that out was of when they when they brought out the bed. Okay, so this is we're 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 skip, we're, we're jumping around, but basically <laughs> We, I mentioned it, you know, it culminates in this big important workshop. And the very last ballet is one written by this guy, Cooper, who's like the hot shot prima donna of the group. And um, sexual rival of Peter Gallagher. And sexual rival of Peter Gallagher in a, in a bizarre that subplot enough. that yeah. is never really explored. But um, the teachers are Peter Gallagher and Doc Ock's dead wife. Yeah, Donna Murphy. <laughs> yeah, she's, who's she's also uh, Picard. Yeah. She fucks Picard. Uh, she's Mother Gothel in Tangled as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's got a great career. Um, she's killing it in this. So, yeah, it's just <laughs> the last performance is this real ostentatious, like he literally drives out on stage on a motorcycle. There's a yeah. street, like a whole subway set. There's a gigantic bed, looks like a fucking meatloaf music video. And it's like, this is a ballet. Like, if you've ever yeah. seen any ballet, it's very, very abstract. So just the idea right. that it has these hyper-specific, detailed uh, that said, sets, is, which just made me who, laugh very hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it was ridiculous. As someone who finds ballet creepy and boring, I was delighted, because I was like, now this is some fucking ballet. This is some shit I can get behind. Uh, you know, there's a motorcycle it's on the, stage. It's the Michael Bay's Transformers of ballet. 
Yeah, it's perfect. And it's set to Michael Jackson and shit. It is. It's like, fuck yeah. The way you make me feel. <laughs> yeah, let's let's have some fucking ballet. Fuck the Nutcracker. Yeah, so... This is where it's at. All right, just in broad strokes, like, what I liked about this movie is, yeah, there is tons of dancing. It's all very impressive. Uh, every, I think every member of the cast came from dance, uh, Zoe Saldana included. Um, so they're all... She's great in it. Yeah. Everybody's great in it. They're all, you know... Um, and I liked... I really liked the ensemble idea of they're not really being a clear main character because like everybody, everybody like could be the protagonist, but also everybody's kind of shitty. And I really, right. I really appreciated that about the movie where it's like, well, nobody's like completely the good guy or completely the bad guy because yes. that's just how oh, life yeah. Peter is. Peter Gallagher is the villain for one story and the ambition for another. Exactly. Um, uh, I want to amend what I said. Everybody's killing it. The one scene where he confronts her for having an eating disorder, was it just me or did the acting degrade just for that scene? Yes. In point of fact, it was in one delivery where she, it's okay. One of the characters is like uh, this super rigid, closed off, very focused, determined student. And we, and we learn that it's because she has a helicopter mom who always wanted to be a ballet dancer. She's good at it, but she doesn't really enjoy it. And she has a terrible eating disorder. And she starts dating this guy who's a med student and also like kind of a sex pest. We'll talk about it. Also, his name is Jim Gordon. His name is Jim Gordon. Yeah. (laughs) That's weird. Yeah. Fucking Commissioner Gordon. I guess they don't own that name, but they sure act like they do if T Public is concerned. Yeah. Yeah. If we we just put the words Jim Gordon on a shirt, we'll get a takedown notice from Warner Brothers. Um, So. She's having a scene with her boyfriend, Jim Gordon, uh, where they're talking about her eating disorder. And he's like, you should probably not do that. It's not good. Um, and they have a big fight. And she, what? there's a line. There's one line specifically that she says where it's like, ah, fuck. I, ah, I, I should have wrote it. I flagged it down, this line, yeah. too, because I, I literally said aloud. Like, I was like, oh, if you want to try that again. <laughs> It's yes. like we, this one scene that's there. It's their confrontation between these two characters. It's like all of a sudden it gets very like movie of the week. I don't know. Yes. It's like an after school. Yeah. Like just again, just just that in that one, one scene. It's so fucking weird scene. Otherwise, the characters are great. They're 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 doing great. But like it's that one scene is like, Jesus, what happened? Yeah, I wish I'd written that line down too because it's like a real, it's a real like hackneyed, like cliched line too, and she delivers it with the that level of conviction. It's it's so it was, it was. If you watch it, you will hear the line. You'll be like, oh, yeah. that's the one he was talking about, a hundred percent. But yeah, Jim Gordon calls her school and then hangs out outside, well, yeah, waiting for her. He's he's working at. He's like serving hors d'oeuvres at an event at the school and just starts bothering her. And like her friends think it's funny. So they tell him her full name, even though she doesn't want right. them to know. Uh, and then he just starts calling the front desk at the ballet school. And then he's just waiting outside one night when they come outside. And like all of yeah. the friends, are like, oh, he's so sweet. I'm like, no, he's not. No, he's not. He's like pushy. Well, okay. It's. I'm not. I'm not about to justify it. But are things were things different pre cell phone, where you had That's to like. That's true. That's true. You had to like fucking go to their That's fucking tr- work I, to find yeah, them. I mean, it's, it's still still it's bad still, behavior. He's still being real pushy. She well, she never. The thing she is, never she indicate, never indicates she's interested. Indicated. Yeah, yeah. It's one thing if it was like, here's my number, or like, oh, I'm interested. In you, I go to the school. Then it's like, yeah, I'll go visit her at the right. school. Like if they had like flirted. Like yeah, when he was, but, but it's, she like is explicitly not yeah, into she it. She is not. This is like the beginning of her arc, so she's still like very laser focused on school and absolutely nothing else. So she's yeah. not even, she's not even giving him mixed signals or anything. It's very clear. Like I am not interested, and this motherfucker yeah. keeps showing up at her school. Right. So this is one. This is one thread. We should go through the the threads because it's a, a a girl who's got a helicopter mom, an eating disorder. And she's just been hyper focused on this career, and this waiter shows up and basically kind of breaks her out of it. Yeah, they do like a Goodwill Hunting scene where one of his friends tells a shitty joke, which they never like complete the joke. I never got what the joke was, and then she tells the joke later to someone else, to her mom, um, and she's clearly like, maybe this isn't the life for me. Um, the other thread is um, Zoe Saldana is um, has an attitude. 
she's really talented, but she smokes cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they act like the, and she's the roommate of this other, the helicopter parent one. They act like she's a real, like, shitty person for saying, could you not smoke in our dorm? And right, I was yeah, like, no. They, yeah, the conflict they create between her and, and, uh, the the rigid uh, eating disorder girl is very funny yeah yeah it's just like oh she but thinks she, the sun shines out of her ass i was like did you right. get that from her in that interaction she, yeah she's got a bad attitude she's always late um but she's very good um and then and then like the whole thing's leading up into the teachers essentially like cast them in their ballets that are then watched by all the the companies yeah to like get people and she doesn't get cast in it which felt I, she does like, yes, but she's not she, she's in it she's not featured she's like in the oh, okay. she's in the chorus basically right so the way these two plots uh intersect is instead the 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 girl with the helicopter parent gets cast in the main role and at the last second she gives it to zoe saldana who surprises everybody including peter gallagher who's running it by going on stage as the lead role Oh, while well, this other girl is like, Mom, I'm miserable. I'm not doing ballet. So that's one thread. The other one is that girl who's kind of the main character because we start with her. Yeah, she's the first person um, we start with. Yeah. Yeah, she's the third roommate. And she's like bright eyed, bushy tailed. Um, and her parents she's, are so proud of her. She's like the opposite of. We, we meet her kind of at the same time as Zoe Saldana. And she's sort of the opposite where she's like, she has like the heart and the passion but she's not as good exactly she's just physically not as talented yeah uh and she is basically yeah has to struggle with that the whole time she has the right attitude mm -hmm. but they're like you have bad feet yeah uh and she sometimes uh, you got bad feet man she gets my into a romantic relationship i don't know what's going on down there yeah exactly i have got mm, my feet are some bad horrifying. feet yeah like to take off her ballet slippers when her feet just has a switchblade <laughs> smoking a cigarette bad foot uh <laughs> so she's got she... an earring her foot has an earring <laughs> <laughs> and an ear it would have to have an ear for that i'm sure i'm uh, i'm flexible yeah it's got an earring and it an has ear. to have the earring though yeah um and so and so like her struggle is she starts she starts dating the guy who's the well, romantic rival. Wait, she thinks she sleeps she's with dating. one guy. Yeah, she thinks she's dating the big star. Right, 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 right. Yeah, and he's the romantic rival of Peter of Gallagher. Peter Gallagher, yeah, because Peter Gallagher, I think, like slept uh, with one of. Yeah, it's he was dating this uh, another. Okay, so this this Kit Cooper is like the big star. He's like about right. to break out and, and be the next big thing in ballet. He was dating this other big star uh, who's uh, older than him, but not like she's not she's younger than Peter Gallagher. So she's like between their ages. And then Peter right. Gallagher is the theater director and he swooped in and basically uh, she went with him instead of with the young guy. And now he's all steamed right. about it. And that's what his play is about. Or rather, his yeah, ballet he, is he, about that. He makes a ballet about Peter Gallagher. About being Peter a Gallagher prank. stealing his girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, and then she ends up being the the main star, the girlfriend. Yeah, of that one. Mm -hmm. Even though she has bad feet, he kind of picks her and is like, "No, you're going to be great." Mm -hmm. And then at the end, she he's like, "I want you in my company." And so the idea is, his company is like smaller. Mm -hmm. You know, it's up and coming. So it's the idea of, do you want to be a little fish in a big pond? or a big fish in a little pond that could potentially be a very big pond um, because she knows that Peter Gallagher will just kind of make her a background dancer. Mm -hmm. And so she goes in and says, I don't even want to know if you've rejected or accepted me, Peter Gallagher, because I'm going to go. I'm, I know I'm good in this because she also takes classes uh, that aren't just ballet, mm -hmm. which is incorporated into uh, this young guy's ballet. So she's just better for it too. Yeah. yeah. Um, all of this is interwoven with a lot of just hanging out scenes. Yeah, it's like, very it's very soap opera. Uh, it's I mean, all the storylines yeah. are basic, but I really enjoyed that they're you know that they keep moving between each other. That there's it's such an ensemble to the to the degree where like nobody's completely a bad guy. Um, I just well, I don't know. It's it's very simple. Uh, it's very simple storytelling. I just appreciated it. I don't know. Well, here's where I think it really shines. Is that this movie is for young kids is about ambition mm -hmm. and about the, the, the choices we make. Yeah. 
when deciding what we want to do for a living, it doesn't handle one situation, which I want to get to, but we have a character who's hyper-focused on a job. Like, this this movie applies to anything. It applies yeah, to it, writing. Yeah, it really does, yeah. Yeah, it, uh, it applies to a lot of, like, and that's why it, the movie spoke to me in my profession, because we have people who are, like, hyper-focused, and they're miserable. Yeah. Like, one of the characters is like, I'm really good at this, Mom. Um, but I'm not happy doing it. Yeah, the way I want to just go do something else. I don't care what I do, you know? Yeah, it's like I found this thing that I was good at very early on, and so I've been focused entirely on that my entire life up to this point, so I don't even have any idea if I like other things or could be good at other things. Right. And it's that realization of, like, she meets a guy who's not ambitious. He's just a waiter, hangs out at a bowling alley. Well, he's a But she likes him. Oh, right. He's a med he's student. A med student. He has ambition. We, look, we know how <laughs> suspicious med students That's are, true, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> if you listen to our Big Cube episode. Yeah. He gives her acid, gives the mom acid. Yeah, he's to, just uh, dosing everyone. That's why yeah. That's why all these uh, la- uh, very soap opera act three decisions happen is because he's just, yeah. everybody's high as shit. They present him as casual, but you're right. As a med student, he's probably working his ass off, but they present him as more of a free spirit, more of like easygoing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's the idea is like, she's like, you know, maybe I, maybe it's about who I'm with, not what I do. There's well, all these questions it's, it's, of like, they, what makes you happy? They do a good, she has to ask. they do a really, I think it's good, but it, it's, it's done very subtly, but they connect it to her eating disorder where it's. All, yeah. When she's going out with him, she's doing stuff like uh, eating pizza and drinking beer at a bowling alley. So it's like, oh, I've got to immediately go throw all this up uh, to go back right. to my ballet world. And so they, they start making that so that every time she goes to see him, she has to go into the bathroom and throw up everything she's eating. Um, right. So they they make those two things. Uh, it's Yeah. It works really well. It's mm-hmm. like poetry. Yeah, it's um, like poetry, man. It's, yeah. And so we have that thread of like, maybe George the Luke thing you're good at, anyway. <laughs> maybe, maybe it doesn't make you happy. Yeah. Then we have like the girl who does the, the, the Michael Jackson motorcycle stuff where it's the idea of like, maybe you won't get the dream you want, mm-hmm. but you'll find the, the dream that makes you happy. Yeah. You don't have to quit the profession. You just find the thing that makes you happy it and ev- makes you feel important. Yeah. Your approach to it evolves. What you want to do with it evolves. Like Right. Because her whole thing was like, I wanted to be in Peter Gallagher's company since I was a little girl. And then she actually rejects him before even hearing if she's supposed to be in it. Because she's like, I don't care. I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah, yeah. My that, ambitions have changed. Yeah, and that's, yeah. Like uh, Then we have, yeah, Zoe Saldana, <laughs> the idea being like, fuck you, I'm doing it. <laughs> like, I don't give a shit if you don't think I'm proper or that I swear. I'm just, I'm going to fucking do it. Because we didn't re- reveal at the end that she does her performance, and then Peter Gallagher, like, reluctantly is like, I would like you to join my company. Uh, but they always have a problem with her attitude, but it doesn't matter because she's so good. Mm -hmm. And so there's that version where it's like, fuck you, fuck, fuck you uh, uh, trying to make me be proper in my industry. Uh, I'm good at it. And you're going to fucking hire me because I know I'm good. Yeah. And that's how, and that's how change happens in these uh, fields or or professions or or arts. You know, that's how, that's how movements happen is, is when we get yeah. somebody in there who is able to push back right so it's covering all these aspects of ambition and talent the things that it doesn't cover and i wish it did is bad luck um shitty people mm-hmm. and rejection because There's, the thing is well they, like they, peter yeah okay go ahead oh uh, i was just gonna say like peter gallagher he's still like tough but fair And it's like, they don't deal with the idea of what if your mentor is fundamentally bad? What if they're sexist or racist? They they brush up against that, too, because they they do make it seem as though... So, like, a big thing that happens is um, Cooper, who's the the hotshot young kid who uh, is the romantic rival of Peter Gallagher and leaves to form his own dance company at the end. Um, The girl with with the heart but bad feet uh jody is the character's name 
Um, she's is briefly involved with him. They meet up at this Broadway dance studio. They spend the night together. Um, and she comes off of it thinking that they're in a relationship and it's clear that he didn't view it that way. Um, so there's like tension in there. Um, right. and then at the end when he offers her the spot at his dance company, he's like, I want you to be my star. And, and she's like, yeah, yeah. He goes in for a kiss. And then she's like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, you're you're a great dancer. You're a great choreographer. I'm really excited to work with you. You suck as a boyfriend, though, so I'm not interested in that. Right. Like, they sort of gloss over the possibility that he might retaliate <laughs> or, like, take that yeah. personally. Like, they, they do they do sort of, there's this naive uh, aspect and it, the, with Zoe Saldana's character, too, where it's like, well, if you just have the raw talent, like nobody can deny that. It's like yes, they can. They do it all the time. Like exactly. if you don't, if you don't play the politics, you're going to get fucked over as well. And there's, I would say they touch on it a little bit with the idea of that guy opening his own company because mm-hmm. that is the result, right? It's like, oh, the, the gatekeepers won't let you in. Well, fuck them. Mm-hmm. I'm starting my own thing, but that's not accessible to everybody. Correct. They also just don't handle the idea of straight up rejection. Um, everybody has a happy ending, including the guy who sprains his ankle. Um, well, he's like, oh, it worked out. I got in the company. The, the closest end. they get is the character Emily, who is a secondary character who keeps getting shit on throughout the movie oh, for, yeah. for being too fat. I'm doing air quotes, even though she's... Yeah, she is a twig. Right. She is the same the size point. as everybody else. And that's the yeah, point. Th- that's the point, is that they, they're showing... I, I really appreciated that this movie kind of shows the toxicity yeah. of this industry. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Anyway, go on. Well, it's they do a thing where basically Peter Gallagher f- f- fires her essentially, or just tell d- tells her she's not going to be cast in the workshop, so she decides to leave the academy. Yeah, her um, parents pull her out because they're like, "Fuck this." Yeah, and it's they. Th- so that's as close as they get to addressing it, but they do manage to do a little bit with that scene because uh, she's a pretty minor character. So, well, what they do is they don't address it full on; they make you think about it. Yeah, and that's that's as good as I get why they couldn't just do a character who has to a character you know who go just, well, even, work at a pizza place, and right? Like not and do like, ballet uh, because they want it. It's a movie, but yeah, and, and uh, they, they 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 turn it into a thing where like Emily's mom is like, "Well, girls, you shouldn't like she, this." Used to make her happy, and it doesn't anymore. So now she doesn't want to do it. So there you go. And you shouldn't yeah, ever be and, in doing. She basically says you shouldn't do something that makes you feel bad about yourself or encourages you to feel bad about yourself or uh, right and that's uh, yeah. the girl with the eating disorder it basically is that yeah um it's the, i think i guess what they don't touch on is the person who's like i love this i want to do it and then they just tell them no that's what i was about to say yeah it's they because ultimately emily still decides to leave like they don't they right. don't have anybody who is made to leave <laughs> right or anybody they they show there's a couple background characters yeah who like walk out crying yeah but like yeah that the guy who sprains his ankle i thought he that still was gets gonna in be, yeah he still gets so in and they should have shown like yeah this is like sports like it's no you, yeah you, you get hurt, hurt we're gonna go with somebody who can actually dance the fucking ballet right. man i'm By you're, the way, having, you're great but this i have a little bit of a prejudice because i went to a performing arts high school and god the dancers were god they're all basket cases they were all just a mess uh because the, they are the jocks of performing arts you know well so you're like getting it, you're getting both versions of it you're getting the the mental uh i'm yeah. not good enough and then also the physical i'm not good enough right and so like they were yeah they, they are would be a, mess. a basket case uh, and they kind of make them shitty people in this movie which i liked yeah like they're all kind of shitty yeah Everybody, uh, not uh, everybody's like I said. Not everybody's a hundred percent good or bad. Everybody's kind of no. shitty sometimes, and everybody's kind of cool sometimes. And they play with the mentor idea, where it's like sometimes a mentor is someone that you are like yay and hug, and sometimes they're like people that you want to show up. Where you're like fuck them. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking teach yeah, Peter prove Pat them wrong. A lesson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so spite they, is they a great really... motivator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love. Oh, yeah. yeah Feed me. I, mm, mm, I get. I get. I get Feed fat me. off spite. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so there's a lot of they. This movie does well because it understands that not everything is so simple. Right. Not and everything's like said, black and like, white. 
Yeah, the characters are shitty to some people or nice to other people. Mm -hmm. Um, They show those dynamics, which is like real life, and they show all the different dynamics of ambition, except for some, you know, except for flat out rejection. Flat out rejection would have been nice. And then people who just weren't able to go. Like, not everybody can go to New York, to fucking New York City for a year. Yeah. Yeah, they Um, don't talk about stuff like, you know, economic issues. And again, they don't talk about straight up predatory behavior. uh, Yeah, and... and They they brush on it, but they don't... We can't... Every movie can't cover every aspect of of, of an issue, um, yes. and that's fine. Like this, this but movie it's covers one of those a lot things of them. Where, in terms of teaching kids about getting mm-hmm. into a really stressful industry mm-hmm. with a lot of competition, I think that is important. But this is two thousand, yeah, and they're not. You know, they're. I think we're we're a little more innocent. I mean, all these characters die in nine eleven, right? Oh yeah, every single one. No, of nobody, them. nobody lives to the end of two thousand one. No. Yeah, that's my head um, for This movie. There's another. I think it does enough that we can forgive it. Like I was, I was. Oh, like pleasantly I, surprised. I, I should with say, the, I'm uh, not mad at the movie for it. Yeah. It's more just. I I actually commend the movie because it's more complicated than I ever thought it was gonna be. Yeah. No, but it's it, it's a, it, it's a very thoughtful movie. In, in, it that, is. in that respect yeah um it's i'm oh, sorry oh i was gonna launch into another thing that i wanted to talk about that i thought was kind of interesting that this movie does um we, if unless you i no okay cool <laughs> um uh this movie it doesn't handle rejection it also doesn't it has this weird through line of disrespecting the institution um and i don't i don't really Wait, what do you mean by that okay um well zoe saldana succeeds by telling peter gallagher to go fuck himself and telling all the teachers to go fuck themselves and doing oh. whatever she wants to um, you're talking about the other side of it being a teacher being a mentor yes and then like jody succeeds by walking in after doing this incredible performance that brings the house down and telling both peter gallagher and donna murphy shut up don't even stand up don't say a word i don't care what you thought of me uh you're you you made me a better dancer and i i will i'll never be able to express how appreciative i am of that but stay in your fucking chairs don't even say yes or no i'm gonna go do my own thing with this guy bye it's i don't I don't feel one way or another about that, um, but it's interesting. Here's what I'll say. Well, it's, it's, okay, I just wanted to complete the thought, is that it's interesting to me that the movie presents a, an idea that, like, here's all the different ways that success can happen, but it, it seems to be pretty consistent on you have to, t- you have to like, have no respect for the institution or the people around you I to th- get ahead. <laughs> I think this is where it gets more specific to ballet. Yeah. But I do think this also applies to what we do. Yeah. Is that some institutions cultivate a toxicity that for sure creates a situation where they don't deserve your respect. Sure. Some don't. And so what I think what they're showing here is that that is the big fault in the mentorship of, of Peter Gallagher. And um, well, the other teacher is nice. So they're they're trying to show the two dynamics mm-hmm. but peter gallagher is running such a uh like yeah. a reality tv show yeah, version and, and of and a dance a, studio he's, he's a toxic nightmare when he's telling yes. telling these women that they're they bad feet they don't have good bodies you're too overweight yeah yeah there's a gatekeeping aspect yeah. where they're like we well, you don't we don't need you you need us mm-hmm. and so there's a satisfaction in telling your mentors to get fucked and i think for a teen movie that's the dynamic to lean on because that's how teens feel, even if they're wrong. You know, the older that I get, the more I side with my teachers when I think back of situations mm-hmm. where I'm like, oh, yeah, I was being an absolute dipshit, you know? But when you're making a movie for teens, adults suck. Yeah. They just suck. And they're showing the negative things that adults can bring. And I think that is the most cartoony part of this movie is um, because you're right, is they're behaving unprofessionally yeah and like when you're in a situation and you're talented it was the thing we talked about with um uh freelancers a freelancer should needs to be um it was it was um a freelancer needs to be um what was it punctual talented and nice but they really only need to pick two 
<laughs> where it's and, and that's what it comes down to is like be fucking nice in your industry because that that'll get you ahead way like be nice and respectful above all else because people will always remember you and that is it sounds like such an old person thing to say to a young person um but it's like but... the idea of being a hot shot dr house type only gets you so far mm-hmm. if you're an asshole yeah because there's a, there's a there's a finite there's a there's a definitive end point to that period right but i think yeah. i think this movie gets around it because like for example zoe saldana a lot like she, her being late that's a problem <laughs> you, you, you really shouldn't be late but like when she swears and stuff it's just like ah, eh, give yeah you that's know, whatever but that's she also like, like a ballerina openly, doesn't talk yeah, like that she also openly challenges donna murphy in class yeah they needed they needed to give a more realistic version of that because i think that's the idea right it's yeah, like, like if you if you right because there's like a scene where they're getting ready to rehearse this workshop uh that is peter gallagher's workshop uh the, that he's directing and at one point he's walking them through the choreography and she scoffs very loudly and it's like what is this even about and i was like i'm sorry right regardless of how talented you are if you said that to the director of the theater right you get your ass kicked you would be out. out you would be on the curb in two minutes right i've definitely worked um not as a writer necessarily as like a video editor and stuff with people who are like control freaks where they're like we have to do it this way and then this way mm-hmm. even if you have a better reason like there's yeah again there's a way they could have done it yeah where like she was I'm, being yeah. picked on for just being different uh or, or for out if and her, they do if they her, do make her like yeah if a, her an outbursts asshole. made a little more sense like who yeah would be sitting there in the middle of a choreography like what is this even about like you'd be like no you'd be sitting there like watching and being like okay this i gotta do this this like you worry about what it means like five or six right. rehearsals later you're just trying to get the steps down right now because they are accidentally making the lesson if you're talented enough you can be you can do a, whatever you want asshole. yep yeah <laughs> that's that's i think my big issue with the movie is the thing it does introduce the idea of here's the different shades of ambition here's the different ways success can happen here's there's all sorts of different ways this can shake out but the movie seems to agree on the point that if you're talented you can just be a dick to anyone right and they'll just and have to suck it up because well the talent i can't deny the talent yeah like, well no you can't you can be a meant, very talented asshole and not have a job yeah i don't think they meant to do that but they absolutely no. did that because it's again they do this thing like i think the movie like it it all stems from when she's smoking in the dorm and she's like could you not smoke in here and the movie wants us to think that the movie wants to be like check out this uptight bitch not wanting zoe saldana to smoke inside and it's like but you know they all gotta live in there yeah there's three (laughs) like the movie is on her side (laughs) yeah but so like they don't quite it's like the person who wrote it had weird yeah sensibilities yeah i mean it's on you what's know, acceptable it's... behavior but absolutely is the if yeah. you be if you're like a, a diva if you're filled with fucking drama and you're you're trying to work for someone it's just like it doesn't matter at a certain point it's like i don't i don't care how talented you are yeah it's you're not worth, exhausting I, look every like every interview anyone gives about working with dan Harmon, it's just like yeah. it's like yeah he's really talented he's a fucking nightmare though i would never work with him again <laughs> Right, because there's here's the thing. There's a difference. Going back to that saying of being talented, punctual, or nice, there's a difference between simply being. Um, I think it's talented, professional, and nice. I don't know. The, it, it, the saying changes, but if someone simply does the job and does it on time and isn't nice but isn't mean, it's like that's fine. Yeah, it's fine. But if they're an asshole, then that's different. Um, it being not nice doesn't mean you can be an asshole. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think of God, who's that Simpsons writer who would just like drop off scripts at the gate? Um, oh, I don't shit, know. Shit, I forget his name. Schwartzwelder. But like there are, you know, there are stories of writers who are just like, look, I'm just going to give you the, do the script. I'm just going to do and the get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to go to your company parties or anything. And it's like, yeah, that's fine. Well, that's funny. Uh, and they, what's funny to me is like the opposite. Yeah. I don't know. I was going to, I was going to launch into how like this movie personally spoke to me. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. This movie personally spoke to us, and that's huge, because it, this applied to uh, the profession we're in or a profession anybody's in, mm-hmm. because it's it's any profession where it's an art, and it's sort of beyond your control, but and yet it's highly competitive at the same time. 
uh, that's what this is about. So it, it really applied to writing, especially writing on the internet now, mm -hmm. where it's like there's going to be people who treat you badly on the top. There's going to be gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. There's going to be people promising all sorts of bullshit to you. Uh, there's going to be people who are good but assholes. Um, there are going to be people who are nice but are 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 not um, entirely professional. Like it's just a wide array, and you have to sift through it all to kind of find your compass mm -hmm. and set your boundaries, right? And that's what all these people are doing. They're setting their boundaries. It's like, oh, Peter Gallagher is a toxic person to some people. Other people, it's like, I can deal with it. And it's like, that feels like freelance writing, you know? Yep. I've had so many conversations with people who are like, uh, yeah, they are bad, but I, 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 I still write. I still write for them. And it's like, sure, you got to make money. Yeah, I need the money. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're all just trying to fucking survive. I get it. Yeah. Uh, and that's this movie kind of nails that dynamic. Yeah, there's even a scene where uh, Donna Murphy is talking to Zoe Saldana like uh, after hours. And she's like, listen, you're you're never not going to run into people like Peter Gallagher in this industry. So it's like, right. all you can do is she's like, all you can do is just come back here. And she's like motions to the dance bar. But what she's saying is all you can do is like, just really focus on yourself and hone what you're doing. And just like, right. You know, I think what they were trying to do, and I do agree that they don't execute it. Well, is the idea of these ballerinas are expected to be quiet, nice and listen to what the, the, the big boss man tells them. And she won't do that. And I think that that was the dynamic they were trying to do, but the specific situations were seemed to be situations where it's like, eh, you probably shouldn't say that. Well, yeah, like, and they do it again with Jody, where she's like, uh, Cooper's giving her the choreography for their thing, and she's like, well, I don't want to do that. I want to do this today, and he's like, well, that's I don't I don't care. I think, that's what I. It's like it's like well, yeah, I think <laughs> oh yeah, that scene because it's about something else, right? Too. It's about, but it's like the idea that it's like. Yeah, yeah, cre the, the creative arts are collaborative, but like in a situation like this where you're just do what the fucking director says, man. You're well, not they're, you're I not Pacino they're showing, out there. Yeah, but they are showing a realistic portrayal. Yeah. Because these yeah. are all kids who've been told since birth that they're the, that they're the fucking boy, best. That they're Harry yeah, Potter. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's all these egos just fucking butting against yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah. Which it, it, it's a nightmare, and it's supposed to be. Yeah, everybody. We we've said it a few times, but every character in this movie just has a monstrous ego, right? And so I think maybe for that reason, Zoe's character is perfect because we're not necessarily supposed to feel like she's right. Uh, yeah, well, none of the characters just, are, which is a, none of the again, characters yeah. are right. Yeah, yeah. No, nobody's totally right, which is one of the things I really liked about the movie. Right, I did too. Um. Yeah, I don't really have any any other thoughts that I wanted to cover. No, um, I just want to say I did not... I can't stress enough how much this movie... I didn't think this was going to be a movie that spoke to me on a personal level. It's really... It's surprisingly well done. Yeah. This this movie is... is yes, there's a lot of dancing, and it's creepy. The and dancing's... Like, well, I, I mean, if you're... It, the dancing's really cool. So if you enjoy well-choreographed uh, ballet dancing with some neat little flares thrown in there, you're going to... You'll, yeah. you'll, you'll enjoy all the dancing in this movie. It's a little silly. Very pre 9 It's very soap opera. It's very soap Again, opera. Again, Osama Bin Laden probably saw this movie and was like, okay, that's it. I've had it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Like, he's this got, is this, probably he's, he's, what caused Yeah, he saw Center Stage and he was like, the great Satan must be... Broadway. yeah exactly um that checks out it's it's very naive in that sense um it's a lot of teens hanging out and there are parts where i was like what is the point of this scene but then there there usually was a point mm -hmm. ultimately so that was good and like yeah i i don't know it um it's a good movie yeah center stage good movie it's a good, good film job. nice work yeah. cast and crew of center yeah. stage you creepy fucking ballet dancers all right all right they're creepy. Mm -hmm. Sure are. <laughs> um, so yeah, th thank you to Mike for Rachel. Happy birthday, sweetheart. Enjoy these ridiculous episodes. Yeah, indeed. I uh, hope, I hope, hope you have did. been. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a real roller coaster. Diddy dancing was like, it was like 17 blam. years ago. Yeah. 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 But that was like a, that was, mm, yeah. And then White Knights was like, ah, what the fuck? And then yeah. this was like uh, my heart. It got my heart. Yeah. Dirty dancing, like. You know, Dirty Dancing got also my got pumping. my heart. Yeah, but but like 
Not like this. Mm-mm. No, this this uh, this spoke to my soul. Yeah. So this was done through our Patreon. If you're interested, you can go to patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. You can uh, listen to exclusive podcasts on there, like Tom and Jeff Watch Batman and Fox Mulder is a Maniac mm. and Star Trek, the next Futurama. Ooh. Those are all on there. Uh, check it out. We watch movies with our patrons every Friday night. Uh, I would watch Center Stage. Sure. I, I, can, would. I can see myself watching this again. Yeah, I would watch this again. Um, we also have a store, tpublic.com slash store slash Gamefully Unemployed, where you can get t-shirts, masks, mugs, stickers, posters, all kinds of things, so long as they don't have the words Jim Gordon written on them. Or Gotham. Or Gotham. Or Bane. That's apparently yeah. a word that they own. Yep. Um, they own it. Yeah. So Those motherfuckers. Check that fucking place out. Check it out. All right. Watch Center Stage. Watch Center Stage. <laughs> yeah. 9-11 is never gonna happen. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.